Hi there, it's Betty from BakerBetty.com, and today I'm here to go over every detail of how to make pie crust that will turn out perfectly flaky and tender every single time. Let's get started. Start with two and a half cups of all-purpose flour in a large mixing bowl and add one teaspoon of kosher salt and whisk that together until it is all combined. Next, we're going to add two types of fat. First, I'm adding 10 tablespoons of very cold unsalted butter that has been cut up into small pieces. This is going to add great flavor to the dough and keep it very light. And I'm also adding a fourth cup of chilled vegetable shortening, or you could also use leaf lard here, which will create tenderness and help reduce shrinkage in the oven. Now I'm using my pastry blender, or you could also use a fork, to cut the fat through the flour. This process serves two purposes. It coats the flour with fat, which will act as a barrier to reduce gluten formation once the water is added. And it also cups up the fat into small pieces that will be distributed throughout the dough. These pieces will melt in the oven and get trapped in little pockets of dough, creating flakiness. Once your mixture looks like coarse meal with lots of little pieces and a few bigger pieces of fat, it is time to add your liquid. You want to use really ice cold water here. This keeps the temperature of your dough cool and ensures that your fat stays in small pieces. You want to add your water one tablespoon at a time because the amount of water needed is going to vary depending on the day. I like to use a fork to gently nudge the flour and fat into the water. You don't want to aggressively stir or mash down the mixture. The more gentle you are, the more tender and flaky your dough will be. Keep moving the mixture around as you add your water and you will start to notice large clumps of dough forming. Once this happens, gather a large chunk of dough together and lightly squeeze it. If it crumbles in your hand, then you need to add more water. If it stays together, then your dough is ready to go into the refrigerator for resting. Divide the dough into two pieces, wrap in plastic wrap, and let rest in the refrigerator for at least one hour. This will allow the flour to finish hydrating, will firm up the fat, and give the glutens time to relax. Now it is time to roll out your dough. Allow your dough to a return to almost room temperature and then lightly flour a clean work surface as well as the top of your dough and your rolling pin. Begin by gently pressing down on the dough in several places to flatten it out. Rotate the dough and repeat. To start rolling, begin in the middle of the dough, apply light pressure and roll out to the front of the edge. Return to the center and roll out to the bottom edge. Then rotate your dough. Continue this process of rolling to the top edge and then to the bottom edge and rotating. You do not want to roll back and forth from edge to edge over and over because this will overwork your dough, causing it to become tough and will also make it difficult to keep your piece of dough round. Keep rotating the dough as you roll it out, adding a little bit more flour to prevent it from sticking to the surface. The goal here is to roll the dough out big enough that it is several inches wider than the diameter of your pie plate. Once the dough is big enough, use your rolling pin and gently drape the dough around it to transfer it into the pie plate. Carefully lift up on the edges of the dough and allow it to naturally fall into the pie plate without stretching it. Stretching the dough to fit will cause it to shrink in the oven. Trim the edge of the dough about a half inch wider than the pie plate. For a single crust, fold the edge under, creating a lip. To create a basic crimped edge, use your pointer finger on the inside of the crust and press it between your other pointer finger and thumb on the outside of the crust. You can also use various tools like a fork, a spoon, or a corkscrew and press it into the edge of your crust to create a simple decorative edge. For a double crust, drape another piece of rolled out pastry over your filling and trim the pieces of dough a half inch wider than the pie plate and tuck both under just as you did the single crust. Any of the single crust crimps can also be used to crimp a double crust. 
make sure you vent your double crust by cutting slashes into the top. There you have it. I hope you are feeling more confident to go out and make your own beautiful and flaky pie crust. For more tips on how to be a better baker, visit bakerbetty.com.